Houthi militia's refusal to lift Ta'a's siege and open main roads undermines political solution in Yemen. In an attempt to reform the National Armed Forces, the Presidential Leadership Council forms Military and Security Committee. International aid agencies urge parties to the conflict to extend the United Nations truce and alleviate suffering of Yemenis. Welcome to Yemen Today TV. This is the English News with me, Rana Suela. President Rashad Al Alimi, chairman of the PLC, received a phone call from United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres. The two parties discussed the latest developments in the Yemeni situation and opportunities to extend the truce. Al Alimi renewed the Yemeni leadership's support for all efforts to bring about a just and comprehensive peace in accordance with local, regional, and international references. For his part, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, praised the, the, the government's measures to prevent the recruitment of children and alleviate the suffering of the Yemeni people. Chairman of the Presidential Leadership Council, Rashad Al Alimi, met the UN envoy Hans Grunberg, who visited Aden for the third time this month. The president of the PLC stressed on the importance of pushing the militia to open all the roads to Taiz and other governors. The following report has more details. UN Special Envoy for Yemen, Grandberg, held meetings in Aden today with President Rashad Al Alimi and the Presidential Leadership Council, as well as Foreign Minister Bin Mubarak Ahmed, to continue discussions on reopening roads in Taiz and renewing the truce. Discussions focused on the need to deliver results for civilians in Taiz and across Yemen. Mr. Grandberg noted that renewing the truce is critical to solidify benefits delivered so far and to provide space to move towards a political settlement. This came after the talks that began on Wednesday in the Jordanian capital Amman between the delegations of the Yemeni government and the Houthi group to discuss opening roads in Taiz and the rest of the regions to enable residents to exercise their right to freedom of movement. However, the militia is still insisting on closing the road and aggravating the suffering of four Thais residents. The difficult humanitarian conditions in Thais necessitate prioritizing lifting the siege during the current talks, especially in light of the ongoing truce and the implementation of some of its provisions, such as stopping the military operations and conducting the first commercial flight from Sana'a International Airport in six years. The siege has plunged the country into a humanitarian crisis. The prices of basic foodstuffs have risen dramatically as a result of the high costs of transportation due to the lengthy, dangerous routes. The country also suffers from a lack of portable water and poor medical services, especially for those with chronic diseases. Those who live in the countryside have to travel long distances on dangerous roads to reach the city and get medical treatment. According to the international organizations, the Houthi group should fulfill its commitment under the agreement, open roads and crossings in ties to end its isolation from the rest of the Yemeni government rates and not delay or link this humanitarian file with other political issues. Foreign Minister Ahmed bin Mubarak met a number of European ambassadors and envoys to Yemen in Aden. The meeting aimed at giving a political support to the PLC and the implementation of the truce, mainly by lifting the siege on ties. The Houthi militia still manipulates with time and block any efforts in the ground to end the siege on ties. The question arises, will the international efforts bring release to the besieged people? The following report gives more details. The removal of the Houthi siege on ties, which has lasted seven years, has become one of the most important issues in the Yemen conflict. Residents of Taiz have been living under severe Houthi siege for nearly seven years. The siege involves the methodical closing off of routes and access ports to the city. The bulk of the population resides in one part of the country that is controlled by the Yemeni government. The majority of industrial and commercial firms are located in the second part. After failing to retain control of the entire city due to public street demonstrations and protests, the Houthis wish to keep this area under their control. Other factors, in addition to military and economic ones, may explain why the Houthis continue to deny access to the city, demonstrating an attitude that rejects the possibility of reconciliation with others. The population situation has worsened as a result of restricted access to supplies, 
medication and foodstuffs. Rough roads have become death traps for travelers and automobiles. Despite the Yemeni government's decision to open Sana'a's airport and the port of Hlaida in accordance with a UN-brokered ceasefire, the Houthis have so far failed to honor the terms relating to the siege on Ta'iz. The international community has succeeded in establishing a tenuous ceasefire and pressuring the Yemeni government to make substantial concessions, such as the opening of Sana'a's airport and the port of Hodeida. Meanwhile, all international efforts to convince the Houthis to keep their end of the agreement have failed. In the end, the lifting of the Houthi siege on Ta'iz has become a measuring stick for the UN truce's prospective extension. Failure to pass this test would not bode well for long-term peace in a country held prisoner by the Houthis, their snipers, and militias, who suffocate cities and subject civilians to ceaseless agony. Still in Ta'iz, a citizen was wounded by Houthi militia snipers. Sources confirmed that a 31-year-old citizen, Rafat Abdel Malik, was shot by a Houthi sniper while he was heading to his house east of the city. This incident comes days after the injury of a child in the same neighborhood, in light of the continued violations of the UN truce by Houthi militia. The international laws ensure the rights of civilians and citizens, especially during the armed conflicts. The Houthi militia, however, always perpetrates crimes against children and women. Yesterday, the militia shot a young man who was a sniper pilot in Kalaba neighborhood within the United Nations sponsors the truce. The Presidential Leadership Council approves the formation of a Security and Military Committee. This committee aims to achieve security and stability and structure the armed and security forces. Such a move would prevent any armed confrontations from happening throughout the Republic. More details are in the following report. The Presidential Leadership Council approves the formation of a Security and Military Committee. This committee aims to achieve security and stability and structure the armed and security forces. Such a move would prevent any armed confrontations from happening throughout the Republic. In its meeting, the BLC agreed to form a 59-member military and security committee headed by Major General Haytham Qasim Tahir. The formation of the committee came in accordance with Article 5 of the Declaration of the Transfer of Power to form a joint security and military committee to achieve security and stability by adopting policies that would prevent the occurrence of any army confrontations in all parts of the Yemeni Republic. The article stipulates, in addition, that the newly formed committee will create conditions and take the necessary steps to achieve the integration of forces under a national command within a unified structure to end the division in the armed forces. It will also address the causes of division in all army conflicts, establish a national doctrine for members of the army and security services. It will also take over any tasks that the BLC deems appropriate to enhance its stability and security. The Council also approved the formation of a committee to evaluate and restructure the intelligence services. It stressed the importance that these committees will carry out their duties in achieving security and stability and adopting policies to ensure the integration of all military and security forces under unified national leadership in order to serve the battle to restore the Yemeni state and to protect the gains of the current national consensus. Oxfam has urged all parties to the conflict in Yemen to extend the current truce to help avoid catastrophic hunger and prevent the escalating humanitarian crisis in Yemen. 
It said in a statement that the two-month truce, which is due to expire on June 2nd, has brought hope to the country after seven years of conflict. More details are in the following report. An international charity encouraged Yemen's warring parties to prolong a two-month truce, urging all parties to work together to avoid a catastrophic starvation in the war-torn country. According to Oxfam, the United Nations brokered truce is critical for millions of Yemenis who are suffering from a lack of basic services and skyrocketing food and other products costs. The charity's Yemen director, Farin Puig, said that the truce has brought a long overdue sense of hope that can break the cycle of violence and suffering in Yemen. He also added that the opportunity must be seized to extend the truce and push for a lasting peace process to avert the risk of millions of Yemenis being forced into acute hunger. Also, other organizations working in Yemen and the Norwegian Refugee Council asked the parties to the conflict to extend the truce agreement. The conflict in Yemen has been going on for eight years now. The truce is the first in Yemen's civil war since it began in 2014, when the Iran-backed Houthi militia took control of the capital Sana'a. In recent weeks, the UN envoy to Yemen, Hans Grumberg, has deepened his efforts to renew the truce. He also tweeted that an extension was essential to secure advantages provided so far and provide space to move towards a political compromise. However, the Houthis' failure to remove the ground blockade on the government-held city of Taiz has hampered Grumberg's efforts. The truce included reopening the highways around Taiz, creating two weekly commercial flights between Sana'a and Jordan and Egypt, and letting 18 ships transporting fuel into the port of Hodeida. But both Sana'a and Hodeida are controlled by the Houthis. Yemen's war has killed over 150,000 people, including over 14,500 citizens. It has created now one of the worst humanitarian crises in the world. The United Nations has warned that 19 million people out of Yemen's population of 32 million would face hunger in 2022, including 160,000 likely to suffer from famine-like conditions. The commander of the 7th Brigade of Shabwa Defense Force survived an ambush that was set by terrorist elements in Maifa district. Also in Shabwa, three soldiers were killed and four others were wounded when an explosive device exploded, targeting a military unit in Atak, the capital of Shabwa. In addition, the Houthi militia committed more than 28 new violations on the western coast during the past 24 hours. The naval exercise at Red Wave 5, led by the Saudi Western Fleet, concluded with the participation of the countries bordering the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. In addition to Yemen, Jordan, Egypt, Sudan, Djibouti and observers from Somalia who participated in the exercise. The drills aimed to achieve security in the Red Sea, enhance military cooperation and unify concepts in naval operations. Coming next. People in Lahj Governorate struggle to have access to clean drinking water. Welcome back. The Yemeni landmine observatory called upon UN envoy Hans Grunberg and the international community to pressure Houthis to immediately stop planting mines. They called on the international community to pressure the Houthi militia to hand over maps of landmines to avoid further civilian casualties. The observatory said that it had documented 17 civilian casualties as a result of mines during the past 72 hours. 
Amnesty International called for an urgent action to rescue four Yemeni journalists in Houthi militia prisons. According to the organization, the four journalists were sentenced to death after being arrested in 2015 and were held without any charge or trial. Yemen's acute water scarcity poses a serious threat to the country's stability and security. Entire villages disappeared due to lack of water. In the city of Taiz, for example, public networks deliver water only once every 30 to 60 days. More details are in the following report. The people of the Habil Hanash area in Al Musaymir district in Lahaj appeal to the local authorities in the district, the governorate, as well as organizations and donors in Yemen to intervene quickly and urgently to dig up wells in the area and to restore the dam that was feeding surface wells and irrigating agricultural lands. The residents of Habil Hanash stated that for the seventh year in succession, they have appealed to the local authorities in the district and the governorate, but no solutions to the water problem in their region have been discovered. The area has been suffering from severe water scarcity for more than seven years which has exacerbated the humanitarian situation and displaced 40% of the people. The population has moved to other areas in search of water and pasture, and the area has become almost devastated. Our wells have dried up, and our cattle have died of thirst. Transporting water can take up to seven hours. The people added that they bring water from Mawia in Taiz and the price of 1,000 liters of water has reached 30,000 riyals. As that price is unaffordable to many, women and children travel great distances to fetch water in traditional buckets from the wells of Mawia. The wells are completely dry. We don't have drinking water. Our livestock have burst due to food and water shortage. Fetching and delivering water is a long and difficult process. The people of Habil Hanash desire nothing from their motherland but some fundamental necessities to quench their thirst, protect their people and livestock, and live with pride and dignity, not roving in utter darkness in search of water from reefs and valleys far from the quiet, tranquility, and peace. Water has become a fantasy hidden in the shadows of a country tired by warfare. Yemen is one of the highest rates of smoking in the world, with more than 21 billion riyals spent annually on cigarettes. A study suggests that the Yemeni people smoke about 6.4 billion cigarettes per year. More details are in the following report. Smoking is a silent killer. Cigarette butts stick to the fingers all the time, and they sip its poisons with greed. Despite its deadly damage and draining of their money, and puts the smoker's life on the brink of death. Smoking kills more than 8 million people annually worldwide. Yemenis are not far from this killer that hijacks their health, amid indifference that smokers admit without equivocation. I'm 40 years old and I have many diseases because of smoking. It's really tiring. Smoking has no benefits at all. It just makes your life worse. I advise everyone to stop smoking. Smoking is very harmful for the lungs and the heart. In other mouth, they use drugs and cigarettes to make it addictive, and it has spread everywhere. The government and authorities should pay more attention to this issue before it gets out of control. Smokers acknowledge the negative effects and harms of smoking, but they blame tobacco companies and their addictive substances. Belief in the demonization of smoking does not leave their convictions, but it did not push them to quit. However, they advise young people not to take this approach. In the midst of the high demand from Yemenis to smoke, the official authorities believe in the need to reduce its harm and reduce the number of smokers. The matter does not stop at the level of warning, but the fight against smoking in Yemen is going through many ways and practical stages. 
We advise young people to stay away from such things, like smoking another. I have tried it myself and I don't recommend it at all. Based on my personal experience, I can tell that it's extremely harmful. The increase in the number of smokers at the level of Yemen has witnessed a major increase due to the war and the suspension of education and awareness programs about the dangers of this scourge which requires concerted efforts to continue and to introduce the dangers of smoking. The soul and money are precious blessings from God that one must protect and not tamper with and there is no more than smoking and such behaviors that end with death. Here's a reminder of the main headlines. Houthi militia's refusal to lift Sa'ad's siege and open main roads undermines political solution in Yemen. In an attempt to reform the National Armed Forces, Presidential Leadership Council forms Military and Security Committee. International aid agencies urge parties to the conflict to extend the United Nations truce and alleviate suffering of Yemenis. This is the end of the news. For more, follow us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube at Yemen Today English. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.